Welcome back to another episode of Sea Devil Sessions University Transfer. I'm your host, Lucinda McNamara, Dean of University Transfer and Partnerships. And here in the studio, we have Tim. Timothy. Timothy. Timothy, the video guy. Is that what we're going to change your official title to? I don't know. What is my title? I can't remember. I think I'm video production coordinator or something now. I don't know. Right. I make silly videos for the college, and that's the extent. Well, we are in the middle of... February. We have just made it past Burr. Valentine's Day. Thank you. It is hopefully not too chilly when this airs. Not like it is in this room right now. I'm talking about the mood between us. And the oh, no. It's warm. Nothing but the best here today. And today's faculty spotlight guest is Mr. Jack Landry. Jack teaches all things drama in the theater department and has worked here for the college for about 19 years. Yep. He's a really good friend of yours too, isn't he, Tim? He is a, a fun guy. I think you are all going to really enjoy this episode. He is quite entertaining. And I think fair warning in that there is some history between Tim and Jack. That will explain the length probably of this podcast. I, we might have actually yes. made Rival a Cub record-breaking Scout gangs. long podcast. He sold more cookies than I did. Many, many years ago, it was my oh. Boy Scout troop versus his Boy Scout troop. This sounds uh, like deep pain. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, he ripped some badges off. I had a working badge. I had a positive attitude badge. I don't think it was earned by any of you. You guys should not have been. You know, listen, to, let's just not talk about it because it touches a nerve. I'm so sorry. Let's get to the interview. How about that? All right. On to Jack. Stepping into the studio today, we have the privilege mm. of Mr. Jack Landry. I can't believe there's not an applause. I mean, the popularity of Landry. Well, people can't see at home, but it's kind of like at Times Square where they're outside the glass <laughs> just pounding on it. Right. Right now, like just droves. Totally. Jack, thank you for coming in today to be our faculty spotlight. We're going to hop right in. Yeah, let's discuss what makes Jack Landry. So important. My parents. Where are you originally from? And what brought you to the Cape Fear region? I'm from East Tennessee, Lucinda. Tennessee, um, Tennessee. Tennessee, do it. Knoxville, Tennessee. And I came to the Cape Fear region from, I went to grad school at Penn State in uh, State College, PA. And I, I graduated in 2005 and I got married about a week later. Wow. In South Carolina to a, a lovely young lass. That's some serious adulting right there. Mm -hmm. I was very, very mature. We were going to drive out and do the Star of an Artist thing in L.A. We, I had the U-Haul. I had the car yes. attached to the U-Haul. It was like a whole rig. And I had a commercial or something in Wilmington because I'd auditioned and I'd done some stuff as a child actor. And I'd worked here and there. And I came down to read this thing. And then it was like, let's do this one little audition. And then a show called Surface, shout out Jonas Pate, was here. And I'd auditioned for it. And I got a gig that became a reoccurring part, lucky enough. We rented a place. And I went to Frank Carter. Oh, my goodness. And I said, hey, I just realized I got an MFA. And I'm here doing this thing. I guess I could teach. And then it was the lovely sheet metal building that what is now the Wilson Center. The E building. No, the E was after that. The sheet metal where they taught motorcycle, Oh. I think, was called the J. And you think the E building was bad. The J was a sheet metal building they taught motorcycle insurance write-off class. Okay. And I taught costuming and things in this building. And I remember Frank, I was like, where's the like theater? And he's like, we don't have a theater. And I, and he's like, just go to the shed. And it was like grad school. I taught from like 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. every day for right. like a year. And moved to the E. The, the illustrious E. The lovely E. And painted a room with some students in the stagecraft class. And we had our first little like black box that had eight lights that you would plug into the wall. Mm -hmm. And it would pop a breaker if you turned them yeah. all on. I feel like the E-Building was just a fire hazard anyway in that For studio sure. area. I remember sitting in there watching like one of the, my first rock stars and thinking, I may die. But we did some good stuff in there. And then that was it. And then, you know, we're now lucky enough the Wilson Center got built and the rest is history. But, yeah, that seems like five minutes ago and forever ago. Totally. I think there was some sort of like either flooding or some electrical thing. I remember that uh, happened. Yeah. With I it. remember I had a snake in my class one day. That's right. Or some Dude, rats. The, the you guys drop gave ceiling things. would come down and drop like, ceiling. Come on, that was a would, good day. I, I remember there. like mid lecture, it'd be like somebody's like ah, and I was. It was like a black snake, so I was comfortable yeah. with that. Mid lecture, Man. one second, one second, Tim. Yeah, kind as of I was saying, acting. As I was <laughs> you saying, got a real snake in. Yeah. Okay, Jack. 
Define theater and what drew you to study it. Comes from the Greek word theatron, which means the seeing place. Mm. That's true. I mean, you do mention being a child actor, which is news to me. This is, is that news to it you? Explains a lot. Actually, uh, my dad got his MFA from the Dallas Theater Center, and he was an actor. And he did a show called Einstein the Man. True story. There was a one man show. He went all over the world in like fifty something countries, and it was like your about, father was Einstein. Well, yeah, and you know what? We were talking earlier, listeners, about how Tim became interested in film because of his early humble beginnings. <laughs> I remember being about three when my mom took me to see my dad before a show. It would take him like two and a half hours to put on the full yeah. deal. And like, he's Einstein. And I just remember walking in the dressing room and he turned around like, hey buddy, or whatever. And I was just like, Rah! like this old dude. Not traumatizing Horrible at all. Horrible experience. And We're then, still working it out. In yeah. Feet. And then he started a little odd television show that would run on the local NBC affiliate in Knoxville, Tennessee, before and after the news about the Great Smoky Mountains and the people in their land. Oh, wow. And it was supposed to be a bicentennial thing, and he did it for 30 years. And I was free labor if he needed a kid. Yes. So I, as a kid, hey, go over there and, you know, whatever reenactment he might have been doing, if it was like a story about a Civil War soldier that ended up in a barn and these people cared, it was a real story. And he, there was a kid on the barn that found, you know, so stuff like that. I grew up kind of, I guess, helping him in front of the camera in that way. I never really thought about it like that. But, and then I did, you know, local theater, things like that as a kid and enjoyed it. But I also like played a lot of sports and kind of, I guess, tipped my toe in a lot of things. And then... When I was 15, there was a show that shot in East Tennessee called Christy with Tyne Daly and Kelly Martin. And I was a kid in their little one-room schoolhouse. It was basically a little house on the prairie wow. in the mountains. Theater, um, to define, I don't know the answer to that. But I like, you know, the best you know it when you see it. You've seen a lot of stuff and you go, that was a great movie because we got something about the human condition. Mm -hmm. And what's great about, I think, performance and theater is if it's affecting, you learn something about you counterintuitively, even though the movie's about a pilot. And you're like, I'm not a pilot. Yeah, but you learn something about the human condition when it's good. And Shakespeare said there's only seven stories, but what's cool is, you know, how you present them. And I think, for me, theater is learning something about, you know, us and... Uh, Getting in touch with Jack. Yeah. All right. So what have you noticed about the differences in the students since you began teaching what, 19 years ago? Uh, well, back in the day, we had snow and no shoes. I think, you know, it's funny because now we have the guys who had COVID and don't think about it often, but you all have kids. And it's funny, I think in a weird way, probably it made them put things in perspective. This newest batch of people, more than some, I do feel like my students now are a little more well-rounded with what is important, maybe. Mm -hmm. But... You know, we were giggling about, it is funny when you reference stuff that you think are core important actors or movies or things that you're like, well, yeah. And then you realize, I've never, what are you talking about? You know? Yeah. And, and like, I have found it's interesting with social media stuff, you've seen a meme of a scene of something, but you've never seen it. Right. Yeah. You're like, oh, yeah, I know The Shining because I saw a, a meme of a shot. Right. Yeah. It's so weird. And that's it. Three steps in between. And you're like, oh, yeah, that's what you've seen of it. No, 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 there's a movie. Yeah. A lot of the stuff we talk about, students being affected by that pandemic is not always positive, and that actually seems like a positive. They've maybe come out with a greater sense of value or appreciation for things that they wouldn't have. Is totally. That you know, when the world is ending or you think it is, it's like, look, I think family's pretty important and, and the stuff that matters. But it also... I think it's kind of like the things that went wrong if you did the uh, students were online students and, and finding that lesson out early that that's not maybe the way I want to go. Right. This is really hard. I need in, in person learning. I think better to have that lesson in grade school than, you know, you're maybe your first year of college and then in your GPA and you're, you're worried about things like that. I think that's maybe a, a positive. But, you know, I don't know. I think there's just all that wisdom when you get older where you probably do put things in perspective in a good way and maybe that's bled over into my teaching. I feel like in a weird way, I'm better at compartmentalizing, you know, life stuff and teaching stuff that probably has made me a better teacher. Oh, wow. Positive Jack the Landry mm. of the Golden mm. Year. You don't get that much. We're mining yeah. gold He's so here. grumpy is. is what we're going to lead with. But it is true. I mean, we kind of have a choice, right? Like as we're getting older, there's a lot of things I could stew on that are super negative, but taking that positive approach and, and your wisdom is amazing. Yeah. It's great. We need it. Well, you got to vent. Everybody's got to vent. Yeah. But I think sure. that comes also with, like, parenting. Well, that's a whole other thing. It's a whole other thing, but that, you know, 
there needs to be a little bit of positivity, I guess. Well, and you just know we're just getting old. That's part of it, too. Because That's like, it. We just don't care anymore. Like, Let's be honest. Well, part We've of it is just out. the people that you're seeing kick the bucket. And it's true, though. You get, like, kind of, you think about mortality, and it makes you sort of put things in perspective, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a, a little. Downer. Thanks for that. A little bit. <laughs> so we are heading into the rapid fire section yes. of oh, our sorry. interview. Are you ready for this, Jack? Um, so ready. <laughs> this is what all the fans wait for. Oh, this is what they're all banging down. They've all tuned away after the death. All the five most of the depressing fans. guests yet. We all changed the channel. Right. They, they say, listen, get rid of that organic conversation. Let's do some quick rap. Right. We need cheesier stuff. That Here was like go. real. Here we go. Jack, what is your most favorite thing about your job? Easy. Like student interaction, doing shows with students, seeing them perform for the first time and, and get, you know, the bug freak out right before and the whole like, you know, you can't have courage without fear, but they kind of get to experience that. And it's fun to see them kind of get one. over that, I guess, a little bit. Yeah? Jack, what's your least favorite thing about the job? When the dean asks you to do a podcast. Uh, what every one of your guests has said. Gosh, darn it. You know, we love teaching, but it's the other stuff that isn't as fun. Paperwork, bureaucracy, things. like. But, you know, teaching is evolutionary. And, of course, that is a part of what we are doing now. As educators. Slowing it down? <laughs> yeah. You know, go back and watch Little House on the Prairie and see what that old teacher used yeah, to do. Yeah, she had to do, I think she, she had to do, do a grades. web attendance. She have dot matrix <laughs> things to we put We can't X's. milk that cow today, Anna. Yeah. This All is, right. this this is, is us thank you for tuning into the podcast. This is the last <laughs> podcast that we will be having. All right, Jack, what sound or noise do you love? Laughter in inappropriate moments. You know how you're watching even a comedy and then there's that one guy in the audience that laughs when no one else does mm -hmm. and watching the either it becomes about that and then the laughter is like a contagious thing or it's like inappropriate and that's weird and how it can change stuff and sometimes just watching reactions is fun the amelie moment when she looks into the audience you know if that makes sense what noise do you hate did i even say a noise i, I, I didn't even say you know. a noise he said laughter. oh good yeah. <laughs> what noise do i hate is yeah. sighing if i'm yeah, honest okay is that very well, i think as a, a performer though like sighing would be like the death nail right like, let's say you were performing in a live theater production and you heard somebody like... Same thing, right? They're bored. Right. Like, the actor's either bored or in real life they're bored. And my big mantra is, like, be interested, not interesting. Right. And I guess you broke that if you're sighing. Yeah. Yep. Well, it's interesting. You gave us a different one. Usually most people are saying it's whining, right? Like, that's right. a pretty typical one for parents. Well, and sighing is a, is a whine, right? It's the polite whine. Yeah. yeah. Really, I'm going... I we do 20 more minutes of us just making those noises. Um, I think the, yeah, the listeners are moving phones. on. Okay. What one piece of advice do you have for college students? It's going to be okay. Oh. So, mm. Yeah, it's going to be okay. I will say it is hard, though. I mean, this is a difficult age. You know, community college, college, you've got all these people coming in, and there is an expectation. Everyone will ask you right out of the gate, what's your major? You know, and sometimes you just don't know what it is, and that's okay. I don't really know too many people that were, I did this, I did this, I did this, I did this, and it was a very logical thing that I'd drawn out. Right. Right? It's rare that Everybody, you meet that person. Yeah, my dad told me he doesn't know what he wants to do, and he grows up. He's 76. Right. And he told me a story like four days ago where he drove a Doritos truck and got fired because he set it on fire. <laughs> he was smoking so much, the truck caught on fire. He might be my Just hero. That, that is amazing. Story. And he, Don't like, imagine that. how Ryan's <laughs> <laughs> pulling up. And I then hate you're Doritos. Like, how much can I put you down for? And turning around, and then there's no Doritos. There's just a flat <laughs> bed still smoldering. What are two college transfer major options for someone interested in theater? I think we have a plumbing program. No, you can, um, we have an AFA in a theater in our fine arts department that we're very proud of. And you can have two tracks. You can take the acting track for performance and then the technical track for those behind the scenes, lighting and stagecraft if you're interested in sets or sound design or generally not performance. And then our acting track that we have a class and acted for the camera I'm, I'm proud of that we get to play in Tim's studio right here where we're recording. And then we do a fall and a spring show with the department. Plug, our first ever Shakespeare, A Midsummer Night's Dream, mm -hmm. is uh, opening in April. Come check it out. We're excited about that. And then one of my things I've, I've tried to do every year is my spring acting two class does a, a final exam called Rock Stars where they go on as a living or dead rock star. 
My most for one song. Production mm-hmm. here. And I wanted to mention it because Lucinda McNamara, I believe, has been to every one of them except for one. Yes, except one. It was last year. It was unavoidable. You had to wash and your it hair. Was, it was devastating. I was devastated um, not to come. But I did go to the dress rehearsal. There was rehearsal. a good Taylor Swift one last year. It's a great assignment because it's always like good or bad. They they learn something and it's always fun. It and, is fun. And the audience judges the winner. So you know, you... pretty much all these classes, the neat thing about Cape Fear is if neat, you're taking... everyone neat. He's brought I, it I back. I said neat in like four episodes. Thank you. Is that a big uh, Tim word? Well, yes. when I'm talking about nerdy school stuff. You know. No, just everything in general. Mm-hmm. No. The thing that's cool is when you take a class, you think, oh, man, is this going to transfer? You know, you might just go to acting class and think like, oh, yeah, this is great, but I don't know if, if I want to go on further, will this transfer? But the case is... We have an articulation agreement with a, a significant amount of colleges in the state of North Carolina where our AFA's classes transfer to our BFA programs, and those guys getting a BFA in acting or behind the scenes in technical theater can have a leg up, and I'm pretty proud of our our training. A lot of lawyers, they say, you know, take an acting class. I think everybody should have an acting class, and everybody should take a a drama class. I think it's just good for human interactions and and helps you be a good listener, a good... Develop those interpersonal skills. and I think just kind of learning uh, a little bit about you is the important stuff about acting. Yeah, and, and, you know, that's when you hear not all states are the same, right? Like, the good thing about where we're at is a lot of times you'll hear, okay, yeah, I was told to go to community college, and then when I moved on, like, none of these classes transfer. Right. Yep. That's not the case here, it and isn't. that's what's kind of a really important thing to point out about our transfer program. You know, just last week I was reading a thing about how community college is thriving in a lot of places, but in California it was getting kind of bashed because they don't have that same sort of pathway. Mm-hmm. And you have these kids who sign up, and they're like, oh, wait, none of this transferred when I got to the next right. school. So that's something we definitely offer, and you never have to worry about. And obviously the price difference. I mean, we yeah, all have absolutely. kids, and you, you start thinking about college, and, and it, it's a significant amount of of money saved. And, and, you know, literally it transfers as that class. It's fantastic. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? That's a great question. I wish I had a really insightful answer. When I was younger, I always wanted to be a photographer for National Geographic. Oh. Mm-hmm. And I even, in college, when I backpacked around, had a Eurail pass. Mm-hmm. Uh, so highbrow. And, which sounds really elite. But true story, we had five bucks a day. And yeah, it would be like, yeah, do you yeah. want to eat dinner or do you want to yeah. drink an extra beer? And let's be So honest. did you yeah. take pictures on this? Trip? So I wrote to National <laughs> Geographic by hand, thank you, mm. and wrote a story kind of that I observed on a bus. And a dude wrote me back by hand. And said, you know, we take four interns, a photography guy, a journalism guy, da, 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 and apply for the uh, the program. And I stuff happened, and then all of a sudden that semester was done, and I never applied for the thing. And this I, is and the offshoot, almost famous biopic that yeah. we're going to do with Jack Landry. He's a big um, god. And then, you know, also I think it'd be kind of fun to be a journalist because we know that they're very successful and in demand. We love our journalists. We're very supportive. What profession would you not like to attempt? Yeah, I guess anything that isn't people-oriented would be hard. Give me an example. I lasted three days in college. I had a temp job for a company called Blackbaud. Mm. Blackbaud. And I'm not real sure what Blackbaud does now. I think they're um, something. But what I did, I copied and pasted Excel cells. Oh, God. From, like, column C to column E. And, you know, I was, like, 20 and I remember my roommate Gabe lasted like the TPS reports an hour and a half at the job, and I lasted three days. Yeah. And he, I remember Gabe went to You're the like restroom. He's like, "I'm going to the bathroom," and after about ten minutes, I was like, "Yeah." He just left. He ghosted, and I thought I'm going to be responsible and I'm going to I'm going to work for a living, and and this is what that means. And I sat there. Soul crushing. And I remember asking a question like, why am I doing this? And they were like, don't worry about that. What am I, is this even for? That's not important. Oh, no. And then I remember thinking, I'm blessed that I don't have to do that for a living. Somebody does that for a living, and I'm not saying your job isn't important, but I couldn't do that. I think it's important to point out a cool fact of a cool job he did do that a lot of people don't know. When you were in Charleston, what was the cool, cool job you did, sir? My freshman year, I drove carriages for six years in Charleston, classic carriage company. In costume. I was a tour guide. No, that's, okay. the, that's the other guys. Dang it. We were legit. We didn't have to woo you with our costumes. Okay. We were like seasoned tour guides. I see. And then what Tim's alluding to, I had a brief period where I had a ghost tour company. Ooh. Take you to pubs and give you beverages to make my stories seem better. 
I think mm-hmm. the ghost tours are cool, though. Wherever I think those they are, are two cool jobs. And was there legitimate beef between carriage companies? Like, was there an Anchorman show? Oh, totally. Point? Was uh, the carriage oh, driven by a horse? I think Anchorman was pulled by a horse. The horse would ride up front and drive, and the <laughs> yeah. human had I I wore the bridle. Yeah. If you said G and Ha, I could step right or left. I could even back up. That horse's sometimes. knowledge of that. I, I corrected that era myself. Of it's the best one yet, Jack. What is your favorite film? When I was a kid on, you know, they had networks back then. They had CBS. There was a mini series called Lonesome Dove. Oh, my God. And Please do not tell me. When I was. Uh, it was not a rattlesnake. It was a water moccasin. It was a water moccasin. Scene. That's right. They, That's right. Were, they were crossing the river, mm-hmm. and the one kid the was Grand. apprehensive and stepped into the water moccasins. I cannot tell you how much Lonesome Dove traumatized me as a child. Just because when that kid is bit by the water moccasins, it is not just one bite. It's like just a series of bites. And I remember this because I've seen it in the last little bit. It cuts to credits with a moccasin. And this is, you know, 80, no CGI. It's probably 86. Mm-hmm. A moccasin locked on his cheek as he comes out of the water like, help. Yeah, no. Lonesome Dove, part two, commercial. All right, final question. Tim, that's all you. All right. So uh, what number is that on my sheet so I can prepare? A, well, a, it's a top 10. It's uh, 10 questions. This is the last one. I just want to prepare a really <laughs> bad answer. Finally. We'd like to ask you, Jack, what advice would you give your 18-year-old self about your future? Enjoy the journey, buddy. It's going to all work out. 80% of life is showing up. Isn't that what John Lennon said? I think it might be. You know, it sounds like a fortune cookie, any of this, right? But, yeah, I think enjoy the journey. All you can control is effort and attitude. So, you know, make it count. I should have T-shirts made of all of these. This yeah, is great. I'm trying to think of other little, like, um, seize the day or well, something like that. Hang in there, kitty. Hang in there, buddy. I love you, man. This is great. 18-year-old, I don't know, like, you know, wear deodorant, change your shirt every once in a while, right? Jack, I do have to thank you for coming into the studio. Hey, thank you, guys. We learned a lot about each other. Sharing is caring. More than anything. The more you know. All sarcasm aside, says probably been the most fun podcast I've done so far. I had a great time. Do we have a thing we sign up with? You can do it with us. You know what we always say. One, two, three. Go Go to to class. class. So cheesy. So, Lucinda, as always, there are some dates and deadlines kind of lingering and loitering out there. How about we have the fortune of having our voiceover talent as our guest today, and we're going to let you tell them something about it, Jack. Go for it. And now here's a list of important college dates for February 15th through February 29th. February 16th is a Friday and it's the last day to withdraw with a grade of W for the first mini session. Friday, March 1st, the first mini session ends and spring break begins. I rhymed there. These are the important college dates from February 15th through February 29th. Once again, to fill us in on our upcoming academic and cultural events, we have CFCC's Student Life Coordinator, our head woman's basketball coach and host of her own podcast for your ears only, the one, the only, Taylor Todd Williams. Thank you for having me. I love this month. This is Black History Month and the month of love, so we have some fun, exciting things coming up. Monday, February 19th, celebrating Random Acts of Kindness Week. Join counseling as they display random acts of kindness ideas in all campuses from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Black History Month event, The Power of Your Truth, feat Tim Wilkes, focusing on confronting and growing from past pain and trauma in black males at 2 p.m. in N202. Tuesday, February 20th, fund your future. Get help with your FAFSA from 12 to 2 p.m. in the Nixon Leader Center, U152. Wednesday, February 21st, Black History Month event. The CFCC Women's Basketball Black-Owned Businesses highlight with Genesis Block at Swartz Center from 11 to 12 p.m. STEM Film Series, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, presented by the Science Department at 2 p.m. in N202. Friday, February 23rd, No Boundaries International Art Residency 2024 Exhibition. Fourth Friday from 6 to 9 p.m. in the Wilma W. Daniels Gallery. Monday, February 26th, Black History Month event. 
Motivation Monday guest speaker Alexis C. Perkins from 2 to 3 p.m. in U152. Tuesday, February 27th, Fund Your Future. Scholarship session, get help with your FAFSA from 12 to 2 p.m. in the Nixon Leader Center, U152. Wednesday, February 28th, a Black History Month event, Black Greek 101, History and Impact of the Black Fraternities and Sororities from 2 to 3 p.m. in U170. Student Math League exam, come one, come all, and bring your calculator from 4 to 5 p.m. in S002. Thank you so much, Taylor. There's a lot going on in February, and I feel like now that we're fully into the spring semester, there's a lot of different things that students can take advantage of. Absolutely. Yeah, this is one of my favorite months. This is the time of good events and fun things happening. Thanks so much. Absolutely. Well, Tim, we have made it finally through another podcast together. Horse carriages, all sorts of crazy movies, snakes. Yep. I mean, snakes in buildings. (laughs) Snakes on planes. Snakes on planes. No, I think it's fascinating to talk to all of our instructors because even though I have worked with Jack for 16 years, there are a number of things that I did not know about him. I mean, come on, dude. He led a ghost tour. I know, that is kind of cool. You should probably plug, even though we get no money for this, the Wilmington Ghost Tour, because I've been on it three times. They can take you on three different routes. And it's pretty fascinating. It's, you know, I haven't done it in probably about 20 years. I, that, that's neat to know. Maybe I'll take my Is it neat, my, Tim? My is it super, super yeah, neat? Yeah, see, when we're talking about that kind of stuff, we say neat. I'm going to take my offspring to that and uh, see some ghost tales. All right. I think that uh, wraps up another engaging episode of Sea Devil Sessions. Episode 8. We're actually on the digital signage now. I can't tell you how excited got I a, am. a logo, right? It's got our sea devil with some headphones on. Yeah. I think Lucent has actually applied for security because the fan base is already a little too much for her to handle. It's hard to cross Front Street from S to Union. Just a lot of sea devil fans out there. All right. So thanks for listening and we will see you again in a couple weeks. And once again, go go to to class. class. Sea Devil Sessions University Transfer Edition is brought to you by CFCC's Community Relations Department. Original theme music by Nicholas Montabano and Fermin Chavez Ramos. Audio engineering by Mitchell White and Tim Vandenberg. For questions or comments, please contact us at Sea Devil Sessions at cfcc.edu. Uh-huh.